in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, welcome to the Thunder of God episode. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. And he can teach us about the power of sacraments. Today I would like to speak about the importance of the sacrament of confession or reconciliation. But before hearing the word of God, please let us together worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us ask the Lord Jesus Christ to pour out his Holy Spirit into our lives. Holy Spirit. We glorify you. We praise you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We all love Teres of Calcutta. She's a saint. In order to become a saint, from her part, she was very strict to herself regarding the sacrament of confession. Every single week, she used to make her confession. To prepare for confession, she spent at least two hours before the blessed sacrament and she examined her conscience. After two hours of examination of conscience, she would go to the priest and make, make her confession. My dear sisters and brothers, the sacrament of confession is very important in the life of a Christian. Pope Saint John Paul II, every Friday, he used to make his confession. And if, we, if he celebrated the Mass privately, before the Mass, 
every time he used to make his confession. And he said, as I am the leader of the church, if there is a small sin in me, that will affect the entire church. So I have to cleanse myself. We remember the words of Jesus in John chapter 17, verse 19. Jesus prayed, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Jesus, a sinless person, God, he is saying, I sanctify myself so that they, they means we, his followers, may be sanctified in truth. So this is very, very important in our Christian life. As a parent, it's your duty to sanctify yourself. As a priest, it is my duty to cleanse myself. So that for that, heaven has given us this sacrament of reconciliation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the first letter of St. John, chapter 1, Words 8 and 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, we all are human beings. We have sinned. When we acknowledge our sins and when we take a decision to confess our sins, our Lord who is merciful, who is full of compassion, will forgive us our sins. There is no doubt. Just as Pope Francis said, God never tired of forgiving our sins. But sometimes we become tired in going to receive the forgiveness from the Heavenly Father. So, my dear sisters and brothers, in the Old Testament, book of Psalms, chapter 32, the psalmist is praying, especially verse 5. Verse five then right? I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So, when we confess our sins, we experience the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord washing away the guilt from our life is giving us a new spirit, spirit of joy. Say Pope Francis, when he spoke about the sacrament of confession, he said, the sacrament of confession is not only purifying us from our sins, but it's a time of encountering the Lord Jesus Christ. This is very, very important. We encounter the Lord Jesus Christ through the sacrament of confession. When he was, a, when he was in his teenage, he never thought of becoming a priest. One day, on the feast of St. Matthew, he went to the church. And there was a priest in the confessional. He got an inspiration from the Holy Spirit to make a confession. And he went to the confessional. He knelt down. He made his confession. And he encountered Jesus Christ through the sacrament of confession. And he took a decision to become a priest. His life totally changed through that sacrament. That's why Pope Francis says, I received the sacrament of confession at least once in two weeks. And he said, this is the time when we encounter the person, Christ Jesus, in our lives. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise, Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. I'm a priest now for 14 years. As a priest, I have heard, I have heard confession of thousands of people. My dear sisters and brothers, I have really experienced 
the deep love of our heavenly father when i sit to hear confession when a penitent comes when he or she saying sins from the heart with a penitent heart i could feel the deep love of the heavenly father the compassion of heavenly father as a human being if i could feel that much love and compassion towards that penitent i always think about our heavenly father his love how deep it is so sisters and brothers the lord is encouraging each one of you to make confession in the catechism of the catholic church paragraph 1783 i'm going to read it for you it speaks about uh, the regular confession indeed the regular confession of our venial sins helps us form our conscience fight against evil tendencies let ourselves be healed by christ and progress in the life of the spirit so the church really encouraging her sons and daughters to make confession often the command of the church is to receive the sacrament of confession at least once a year but the church is promoting us to receive that regularly so that we can grow in the holy spirit so i saint isidore of seville he speaks about this please listen confession heals confession justifies confession grants the pardon of sin all hope consists in confession in confession there is a chance for mercy believe it firmly do not doubt do not hesitate never despair the mercy of god hope and have confidence in confession so he says all hope consists in the sacrament of confession my dear sisters and brothers you know when jesus was raised up from the dead when he appeared to his disciples the first commandment in the gospel of john he gave them is to forgive the sins of the people the name jesus itself means god saves god saves us from sins that is why jesus came and before ascending into heaven jesus wanted his apostles his disciples to perform this sacrament please listen gospel of john chapter 20 jesus said to them again peace be with you as the father has sent me so i send you when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit jesus said to them receive the holy spirit then afterwards immediately after giving them the holy spirit jesus said if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them if you retain the sins of any they are retained so the first commandment according to the gospel of john after the resurrection of christ jesus is to forgive the sins of the people because jesus knows that the people who are under sin are under slavery it's the duty of the church to forgive sins praise the lord praise, praise the lord. lord i am coming from the archdiocese of birmingham in the uk cardinal henry newman was not a catholic who never believed in the sacrament of confession but once he got an opportunity to go to a catholic church and he so he an young adult whose face was filled with sorrow sadness and after a few minutes he noticed that this person was going to the confessional after 10 or 15 minutes again when father newman noticed he really was amazed because he could notice 
he could notice a great change in his face. His face was really shining. Then Father Newman asked him, what were you doing? And this man said to him, I was confessing all my sins. And I encountered Jesus, sacrament of confession. This really touched the life of Father Henry Newman. It was one of the reasons why he came to the Catholic faith, where this sacrament, the sacrament of confession, is really happening. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. As you know, there are many saints who laid their lives in order to protect the secrets of the sacrament of confession. The patron saint for the sacrament of confession is Saint John Nepumok or Nebuchadnezzar. He was the confessor in the in King's Palace, King Wenceslav in Prague, in Czech Republic. And this king, he had a problem that he had some doubts about her, his wife. And this particular priest, Father John, was hearing the confession of the queen. One day, the king asked Father John to reveal the confessional secret. And Father John said, no, never. Because he, the king had authority, the king started to ridicule him. But Father John was very strong in his faith. This cruel king, start, he gave an order to cut off the tongue of this priest. And the police threw him into the river. And he became a martyr. He became a martyr only for keeping the secret of the sacrament of confession. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. So, my dear sisters and brothers, let us believe the power of the sacrament of confession. There are many names for this. Some call this sacrament of repentance. Some call this sacrament of reconciliation. Some call this sacrament of confession. Sacrament of conversion. Let's thank the Lord for giving us this sacrament. In the letter of James, chapter 5, verse 16, St. James is exhorting the faithful to confess our sins. Please listen. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. In those days, confession was public. But after a few centuries, the church said, you can do your confession in private. So there are private confession and public confession. The church promotes her faithful to make confession in private. But there are options to make public confession also. So some, there is a, a possibility of dangers happening, so you can, the priest can absolve the sins in public. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, my dear sisters and brothers, let us thank our Lord Jesus Christ for instituting the sacrament of confession. Let us hold our faith in the sacrament. Just as Saint Isidore said, all hope consists in confession. Now let us close our eyes. Let us remember all the priests to whom we have gone to make our confession. Some of them might have died. And also let us surrender all the priests whom we will go to make our confession. Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit and if you forgive the sins of any, it will be forgiven. Lord Holy Spirit, Lord Holy Spirit, 
increase our faith in the sacraments especially increase our faith in the sacrament of confession holy spirit come come breathe upon me breath of god holy spirit of god breathe upon me spirit of the lord holy spirit of god as we lift our hands in surrender holy spirit to your name most high holy spirit I'm to your spirit i am walking in your love jesus Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. dear brothers and sisters in Jesus we are in the presence of our lord jesus christ he is compassion and he is full of mercy when we come before him with a contrite heart he will accept us let us come before him with a repentant heart and mind lord we pray for a change of heart lord sometimes our heart is stony Lord we pray for your holy spirit so that we may receive your touch and anointing and we'll be able to change our heart Lord we pray in your presence hear our prayer Lord change my heart oh God
took our infirmities in his body he bore our shame and he died for us on the cross of calvary lord we believe the power of your death and resurrection lord wash us with your precious blood and give us a new heart jesus now sisters and brothers we are receiving the blessing from the lord again please open your hands before you call upon the name jesus 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 we believe Jesus I believe Jesus 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 I believe Jesus Jesus I believe Jesus I believe